Welcome to video 8. Now that we've discussed MVC, OOP, and talked a little bit about the coding style guide, let's move on and start working on our first actual coding, working on the template object. The template object is very important to my implementation of the MVC pattern. If you've done any of my other MVC style courses, either the CMS or the PHP login with OOP and MVC, you should recognize this object. Um, it's copied and pasted directly from there with just a couple tweaks for this specific course. If you take a look at the chart that you saw about two videos ago, um, this demonstrates the MVC pattern. The user provides the input, the controller decides what to do, it may get data from the model, it passes it off to the view, and the view gets displayed out to the user. Well, the template object sits somewhere in the middle here. The controller uses the template object to display views, and it uses the template object to store data that gets then displayed in the views. So it's pretty important to the way I handle things. In this particular video, we're going to be covering a couple key methods that this object offers. We're going to be covering load, which loads our views. We're going to be covering redirect, which sends the user to a different page entirely. We're going to be covering set data, which allows us to store data that's going to be used and displayed in the views. And we're going to be talking about get data, which retrieves that information and displays it within our view. In the next video, we'll be talking about additional functionality that this object offers, including getting and setting alerts. Let's dive into the code. So I'm going to open up m underscore template.php and I'm going to start out with an opening PHP tag. And then I'm going to add a comment, which is going to indicate what this file is and roughly what it does. So it's the template class, and it's going to handle all templating tasks. So displaying views, so displaying views, alerts, errors, and view data. And underneath that, we're going to add class template. And we're going to start this file out with a constructor, like so. And I'm just going to leave it blank. Um, we don't actually need to do anything within the constructor. But I have made sure to include it in the file, just in case you or maybe even me at some point in the future comes back to this and actually needs to do something within the constructor. The first thing we're going to do within this file is we're going to talk about the load function. So public function load is going to load a URL that we specify. And basically this function is just a wrapper for the include function. So it's going to include whatever URL that we tell us, that we tell it to. And right above the load function, I'm going to add a little bit of documentation. So I have a shortcut on my computer. Um, basically, I type in a couple letters, hit tab, and it automatically expands out to a full snippet. And I'd highly suggest you find something like that if you can. Just makes it easier and faster for me to type in documentation. So I would highly suggest you add comments as you go, rather than coming back to them and trying to do it later, because it's quite possible you'll never make it back, and you won't actually ever end up commenting. So I'm simply going to describe what this does. Um, in this case, it loads a specified URL. And the parameter is a string. And it returns no. It doesn't actually return anything. So let me save this. Um, we're going to need to modify two other files to take advantage of this template object. The first one we need to modify is init.php. And down here at the bottom of the file, we need to create any objects that we're going to be using. So the first step in that is include. We're going to include app models m template. So that'll include the class. And then we actually need to create an instance of that class. So template equals new template, like so. So when the init that PHP page is loaded, 
It's going to create our template object. Now we need to actually use it. So within index.php, rather than doing an include, I'm going to do template load. So let's do a quick preview and make sure everything's working properly. There we go. So you notice when we refresh, we get exactly the same page back. And while the view itself hasn't changed, the functionality behind it has. We're now using a template object to load whatever view we specify. Let's go back to mTemplate and let's add in another method. In this case, it's going to be public function redirect URL. And similar to the above function, it's going to do basically the same thing. This is simply a wrapper for the header function. So we're going to redirect to whatever URL we specify. And then I'm going to put exit to make sure that the code execution stops there, um, just in case it would continue after the header function. Let's add our documentation. And this redirects to specified URL and it's a string and it returns null. So uh, let's test this out. Let's go back to our index.php. Let's comment out this line and we're going to redirect to killer sites. So, you'll notice now we're automatically redirected to the Killer Sites website. One quick comment before I continue. At this point, you might be asking so, why even bother creating load and redirect methods within this object? Why not just use include and header directly within the controller? Well, I'm trying to make the template class the central location for all templating related activities. So it's going to display all the views, it's going to store all the data that's related to the views, anything that's view related goes here. So it's a way that I can consolidate all that functionality into one object. I also feel like it improves my code quality a little bit. Um, rather than doing an include, I use template load, which is a little bit clearer. It says exactly what it does. We're dealing with a template object, which handles all of our views and all that information. We're loading whatever URL we specify. So from that perspective, I think the code is a little bit cleaner. Since I try to keep each of my videos roughly around 10 minutes each, it looks like I'm running out of time to talk about the getData and setData functions. So join me in the next video and I'll talk about that in more detail.